Got another question for the transition elements topic. So this one includes reactions of copper compounds, types of reaction, identification of unknowns, complex ions, ligands, and optical isomerism. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So if you add HCl to this pale blue solution, you get this complex ion here, CuCl4 2 minus. We'll go this way now. If you add ammonia, so a small amount at first, you get the pale blue precipitate of the hydroxide. So you can either give the simple formula for the hydroxide or its full formula. If you continue to add the ammonia so that it's in excess, this hydroxide precipitate dissolves given this complex ion here. So moving on to reaction two now. So if you add a source of iodide ions to the pale blue solution, the white solid is copper one iodide and this brown solution is iodine. Moving on to the two reaction types. So reaction one is ligand substitution. The H2O ligands have been replaced by chloride ligands. And reaction 2 is a redox reaction. You'll notice I've written some oxidation numbers. So the copper has been reduced from plus 2 to plus 1, whereas the iodine has been oxidised from minus 1 up to 0. Moving on to part B now. So the first thing we want to do is work out the empirical formula and then the molecular formula for anhydrous complex B. So the usual thing, just the percentages divided by the relative mass, we get the moles, three significant figures for the moles, always a good idea, and divide by the smallest, which is this one here, so we get this ratio of atoms. So that gives an empirical formula of this, so we just need to work out the MR of this and see how it compares with the MR of the actual complex. So you can see the MR for the empirical is 309.7, so that means the molecular formula of B is NiCl2C6N6H24. Okay, so moving on to this mass data now. So we can work out the mass of A by taking this mass here and subtracting the mass of the empty crucible. So we've got 8.297 grams of A. The mass of B is the crucible with the anhydrous complex in it minus the empty, 7.433 grams. And the mass of water that's removed, so obviously the difference between those two numbers, 0.864 grams. So we, ne we know the formula of B, so we can work out how many moles of B we've got. So mass over MR is coming out at 0.024 moles of B, and we'll work out the moles of water, which is coming out at 0.048. So you can see that's a 1 to 2 ratio. So that means the formula of the hydrated complex A must be that, with that dot 2H2O from that ratio. So if we now think about the information about B containing the cation with nickel, carbon, nitrogen and hydrogen, it's going to have a 2 plus charge because obviously you've got these two Cl minuses. And the fact that C contains three bidentate ligands means it's going to have this formula here. So what is D? What is that bidentate ligand? It's going to be this here, which is going to have that structural formula there. So the only thing we need to do now is draw the 3D diagrams for the optical isomers of C. So we're told it was octahedral, so I'm starting on the left-hand side with this empty octahedron. So I'm just going to put the ligands on now. So I'll start here. So NH2, NH2, and then I've got those two CH2. So I'll just do those as skeletal formula, and then I'll do the next one here. Just make sure you get your connectivity right. So it's the nitrogen that's bonded to the nickel 2 plus. And then this one here. Draw it like this. And now all I need to do is mirror that on this one here. So there's the first ligand on. There's the second. And there's the third. 